Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I am here in Lychee Slicer Pro. This is a filament and resin slicer. Yes, that's true. You can work with your resin printers and FDM printers in Lychee Slicer. I'm using the paid Lychee Slicer Pro. However, there is also a free version of Lychee Slicer. Why am I in Lychee Slicer today? because we are going to go ahead and set up the K1 and K1 Max. Due to habit, I may refer to this as Lychee Slicer Pro. However, everything I do today, you can do in the free version of Lychee Slicer. When it comes to the K1 and the K1 Max, there is much debate to which slicer one should use. Creality has their own slicer, Creality Print, and while it has a less than stellar reputation, it's not that terribly bad and it is functional. However, being a newer slicer that can and will benefit from a longer development period, it is missing some features those of us have come to know and rely on in other slicers, such as support painting and support blockers. While some people are fine working in Creality Print, Others just are not interested and want to work with the slicers they are more comfortable with. One of the options regularly brought up in conversations on interweb forums is Orca Slicer. Well, today I'm here to offer you yet another option that I never see discussed that most people don't even know exists, let alone has a K1 and K1 Max profile built into it. Yes, that is a lychee slicer. So we are going to go ahead and walk you through the very simple process of adding K1 and K1 Max profiles to Lychee Slicer, importing a test model, doing a quick slice, and saving that G-code. If you are a free member looking to check out the pro options, you can click on Level Up, Learn More, and it will take you to a website that discusses some of the benefits of being a pro member. Today, we are sticking to the basics. Let's go ahead and add our K1 and K1 Max to Lychee Slicer. On the top left corner, look for this icon 3D printer. Left click, you will be presented with this screen. We are focusing on this section labeled 3D printer. Here is a list of all the printers I currently have installed on Lychee Slicer Pro. Looking here for the add button, click on that. You'll be asked which type of printer you are installing a resin printer or a filament printer, often referred to as an FDM printer. Click on filament, and here you may type it in or scroll down to Creality. You will see there is an extensive list of supported models in Lychee Slicer. At the bottom, you will see Creality K1 and Creality K1 Max. We will start with the K1. Click on it and you will see it appears right here in your printer list. Move over to add. FDM printer, repeat this process for the K1 Max, scrolling down to Creality, scrolling down to K1 Max, click on it, and the K1 Max is now added to Lychee. You will notice this little gear icon appears when you highlight that printer. We will go ahead and enter that settings option. Inside this screen, you will see some of the usual suspects. The first thing it wants is you to name your printer. You can simply keep it as Creality K1, or you can name it whatever you want. You may be boring and leave it as Creality K1, or you may rename it. My K1 is named Spender. Moving down to volume, you will see your bed and Z height. And moving down to extruder, you will see your filament diameter, nozzle diameter, and extruder select G code. Unless you have changed the size of your K1 nozzle, all of these will remain default and we will go up here and click on G-Code. In here, if there is any reason to modify your G-Code, you would do it here. Lychee has made it very clear and easy which segment of your G-Code you are looking at. You can simply click into it on the left side here, choosing header, start G-Code, fan G-Code, layer G-Code, and end G-Code. At the current time of this video, I see no need to change any of this. If you do, this is where you will do it. Before pressing OK, I will click Check Cloud Settings. This will point out if anything in your profile has changed compared to the current profile saved in Lychee's cloud server. We can see what those changes are. 
by clicking on the new tab labeled cloud and the one next to it indicating one change. What this is basically telling me is that they update their official values on their cloud profile and you can sync that profile with Lychee Slicer. However, hilariously, the change it is informing me of is the fact that I renamed the printer from the official value Creality K1 to my name Spender. I will choose to keep my current value, press save and apply selection and then press OK. You will see it's no longer prompting me that there is a discrepancy in the official profile and my profile. Press OK and repeat this for your K1 Max. We will repeat the exact same process. I will first check the cloud profile. No changes are available. And I will rename my printer Big Hero 1 and press OK. You will now see Big Hero 1 and Spender listed in my printer list. Now that your printer is added, you can look below to the filament printing settings. In here, you can make custom changes to the filament on your printer. I am now going to add a default filament profile for one of my favorite filaments, Hyper Series. You can do this for your favorite filaments, or you can simply leave this be and go straight to slicing. To do this, simply highlight the printer you'd like to work with and click on Edit. I'm going to do this for the Creality K1. By highlighting your K1, you can scroll across and click on Edit. On the screen, you will see the default PLA profile for this printer. You may make some changes if you'd like or leave it as is. I am going to print with Creality Hyper Series, so I will make a couple changes. Under Brand, I will click on Creality. Material, I will leave it as PLA. Under Color, I will leave it as White. Under Name, I will call it Hyper Series. And you will now see Creality PLA Hyper Series. Under Comment, I am going to erase it. If you'd like, you can add spool price and size to get a better idea of how much a model costs to print. I will put $20 since that is a good balance between sale prices and daily prices. And of course, I will change the size of the spool to one kilogram. Moving down to temperature, I see nozzle temp is set at 200. This is a little slow for the faster moving machines such as the P1P, P1S, X1C, and the K1 and K1 Max. I am going to move this to the more typical default temperature for a profile of one of these machines, which is 220. I do like 60 for the bed temperature. I recommend you leave it there. Moving down to supports, I will leave this be. Moving down to adhesion, I will leave this be. It is defaulted to have a skirt. I do believe you should at least use a skirt. It does help ensure that by the time you get to the first layer of your actual model, things are going smoothly and any previous filaments have been flushed out of the nozzle. Moving over to extrusion, we're going to look at these defaults. Again, these are just defaults. You should be making adjustments to your printer's slicing settings for each model based on what you determine to be your best chance of success and quality on that model. However, I do find 300 to be a bit high of a default speed for me personally. I'm going to bring it down to 200. I do find three walls is also a bit excessive as a default for walls. I'm going to bring this down to a more common denomination, which is two walls. Infill pattern, grid, don't care. Infill, we will set that per model. First layer, we will set that per model and press OK. We now have a Creality K1 Hyper Series PLA filament profile saved in Litchi. Press the X button and return to your bed. Now that we are back on our main screen, looking at our print bed, you will see Lychee offering us to add files through File Uploader or to simply drag and drop from an open folder off screen onto the print bed. However, it also offers you a series of basic shapes, a calibration cube, some text, a benchy, and a chicken. Left click and the chicken appears on your print bed. I am going to leave the chicken on the screen while we look over some of our settings and then I'm going to replace it with my traditional test dog for the actual print. So here we are with the chicken sitting on our print bed and the default filament profile that we set up earlier applied to this model. Let's go over a few of those basic settings. Those of you used to Orca and Bamboo Studio 
are used to a lot of those settings being on the left side. Cura, a lot of those settings being on the right side. Those options are there prior to slicing and after slicing to a second preview tab. However, in Lychee Slicer, those slicing settings are actually in their own tab called Prepare. So we will leave the layout section and move to Prepare. In the Prepare tab, you will start to see some of those settings you are familiar with, and you will see that they are attached to the Creality PLA Hyper Series that we added earlier. If you hover your mouse over that title, those default settings will pop up. Here is your layer height, your infill pattern, your infill density, your walls, your print speed. You will notice infill density at 15%. I'm going to go ahead and set this to 8%. You can simply click on it and type in eight, or you can hold your mouse button and use this fun little slider to set it how you want in increments of five. However, I'm going to use eight. Same for your walls. You can choose your walls in increments of one by moving the slider or simply typing it in. We defaulted it to two and I'm going to keep it there. Our max print speed is set to 200. Moving over to adhesion, we have our skirt chosen. And if you'd like more advanced settings options, which you should, go ahead and click on advanced. Advanced will open up more detailed options for each of these settings. You may notice some of the settings you are looking for are not available. That is because they are hidden by default, similar to how many advanced features in Cura are hidden. Look for this orange button labeled Edit Selection. And on here, you can check the items you'd like to show up in that advanced tab. For me, I want nozzle temperature and bed temperature to show up. I want support and support density to show up. There are many other features you can turn on. We will not go over those today. However, you may want to move to the speed setting. And here you will see you can highlight which speed settings you want to show up. I do believe max print speed is defaulted to visible. However, I see it's unchecked, so I will check it. If you want these available for manual changing, simply check those boxes. For me, pressing the OK button does nothing, so I will press the X button. You will notice all of those newly checked options appearing in the Advanced tab. I am going to go ahead and leave all this as it is, but we are going to have a look at supports. I'm going to choose it to at slice. And we will have a closer look at support settings by bizarrely having to move our mouse all the way over here to the left side of the screen and click on the supports tab. This will open up more advanced support settings. These support settings are very different than what you may be used to for supports in other FDM slicers and you will need to take some time learning how they work and how to make them work best for you. I have had enough looking at this chicken and I'm now going to switch to my beloved test dog for printing. I am going to delete the chicken by going to layout, highlighting the chicken and pressing the delete key. I am then going to drag and drop my traditional test doggy onto the bed. All of the settings we have just adjusted will remain However, I will go to supports and turn supports off. We are now ready to slice this doggo. Unlike other slicers that have a slice button somewhere on the screen, with Lychee, we will switch to export. On this tab under export slices, you will see export G-code to file. Click on that. I will save it as test dog k1 lychee and it will slice the file and generate a preview the file is now sliced and it is offering an estimate on how long the print will take how much filament will be used how much the model will weigh and the estimated cost of printing this model based on the parameters we input in the filament profile earlier here you can see the print preview you will see we have the skirt you will see we have no supports and this is exactly how i want it to look to preview the layers of this model simply go on the right here to layer preview and you can watch the entire print process from top to bottom having a look at your walls and having a look at your infill you can see that two walls is clearly enough and clearly this is enough infill for a model that's used for display purposes Let's go ahead and upload this to Creality Cloud and send it to our K1. Here I am 
in my workbench on Creality Cloud. I will hover over Upload, Upload Slices, Select Files. I will navigate to my Leachy folder and click on Test Dog K1 Leachy. Press Open. Once this meter reaches 100%, it will go away and you can press Upload. Once uploaded, it will bring you to your uploads in Creality Cloud. Here it is, Test Dog K1 Leachy. Go ahead and press the print button. You will see Leachy properly tagged the G code file for the K1, and Creality Cloud has detected that the K1 as the compatible printer for this file. Highlight that by clicking on it. You will see the blue checkbox and press prints. This will go ahead and send that file to your K1 printer. Opening up the camera view, your manual controls, and your device progress. Behind me, you may hear the fan of my K1 spin up. And there you have it. We have successfully sliced and sent an STL file to the Creality K1 using Leachy Slicer. And here you can see that the Leachy Sliced test doggy on the K1 is printing very nicely. Our success continues as we are mostly through our test doggo. And there we have it, adding the Creality K1 and K1 Max to Leachy and a basic introduction on how to work with it. In Leachy Slicer's current form, I have a hard time recommending it over more advanced slicers such as Orca Slicer and even Creality Print. However, should they continue to develop certain features where I find it lacking or confusing, specifically in the department of supports, by adding support painting, tree supports, and settings that are more in line with the terminology and lingo used in more mainstream slicers, I think Leachy Slicer could over time become a viable choice for slicing with your K1 3D printer. At the time of this video, I am inclined to encourage you to look elsewhere for your K1 and K1 Max Slicer software solution. Hey.